let's move on to the to the uh, session talks. Oh, you mean it's time to get the party started, is it? Yeah, I think yeah. Mm. Maybe T Teresa, if you want to to take over. Yes, sure. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Teresa, and I'm a PhD student at Ulm University, and I'm going to. Uh, um, chair the first session, our technology session. Um, we have three talks in the session. Uh, two are going to present a, uh, a prototype of a, I think first of an augmented reality uh, headset and then of the smart eyewear headset. Uh, and one talk is going to present a 3D gaze estimator. So I think we can start with the, with the first talk, which is by Damien, I guess, right? Dr. Damo, the one and only. Uh, the stage is yours. But is it really? Well, hello there, everyone. We're going to get ourselves a little bit started over here. With any luck, you should all not be seeing that view because that was a surprise, but instead be seeing the slides. Well, if you don't know me, my name's Dr. Damo, Beer Labs. We're presenting Project Aerial, an open source augmented reality headset for industrial applications. So every tradesman's dream is to be able to walk onto that platform and very quickly and easily identify using augmented information in the environment, more information about the task at hand. So we wanted to be able to create a headset that meets with industry standards in order to be deployed into the field. And industry standards usually say something along the lines of the headset mustn't block the uh, peripheral view. When inactive, the headset must not obstruct the user's view of the real world. The front of the headset needs to be modular in order to adapt to PPE equipment. And that the AR content must not require any additional peripherals in order to interact with it. So joysticks come out of the question. The headset must have a means to either quickly doff or flip up in order to quickly remove the content. And that it must be as light as possible in order to pre prevent any fatigue. Finally, the headset may be tethered to a backpack, belt-worn, or a side-carried portable compute solution. That's mainly because most tradesmen in the field already carry such equipment. So, industry-available hardware, well, I mean, everybody's heard of the Magic Leap 1 and the Microsoft HoloLens 2. Beautiful, absolutely lovely in the market. Over 3,000 US dollars. And I don't know, if you've worked with them, they're very high quality. The hand tracking is really good on them as well. However, they're closed source, they're quite expensive, and they're quite hard and expensive to dev with, which is important. It also requires adapters in order to put protective equipment on it. So for example, welding helmet infrastructures or hard hat helmets, which is used usually in the field. So moving a bit over forward, we look into the open source market and one thing is uh, Project Northstar and this handsome individual standing in the middle of nowhere, as you can see, is already wearing such a thing. They're open source, they've hand, got hand tracking integrated, so we're covered on the peripherals, they're 3D printed, lower fidelity, however, and the screen placement blocks peripheral views. This makes it a little bit more annoying to fit with the industry standards, even though the quality that we can achieve through the headset is quite amazing along with the interactions. Looking into the other side of the open source market is Project Triton. And you've probably already noticed that it shares a lot of the features with the Project Northstar. So it's open source, there's hand tracking, it's good screen placement, it's placed at the forehead rather than at the side, and it's 3D printed, allowing us to modify the design to fit the PPEs. However, there's no head tracking, it's at the lowest fidelity, and no optical on distortion, which unfortunately takes it down to the mark. Makes me, you know, wonder, well, what if happened if we took the two of them and decided to slap them together? Well, I guess we got to take a look at how we can do this. Usually in the tracking world, we have two types. One is outside in, where the sensors are placed in the environment and the user has some sensing equipment on their head to kind of track where these sensors in the environment are. The second one is inside out tracking where the sensors are placed on the user and allows us to track the user's body and head movements throughout the environment. Now, because we're trying to apply into the industrial field, outside in tracking kind of goes bye bye. So we take a look at all the inside out trackers. Now this is actually in the paper, so I'll just quickly go over the main reason we decided to stick with the T26105 because 
its price point is extremely low and more importantly the processing is done on ho on the uh, chip itself not on the host that it's equipped to which allows us to run this on much cheaper and equip um, easier to access equipment so assemble the hardware yeah what you're seeing here is just a basic diagram with all the 3d printed parts and electronics and you can see roughly how it's molded together however the links both in the paper and in this presentation actually direct you to the uh, bill of materials and the assembly it calip first once we've assembled the hardware we need to calibrate the optics for this we take a page out of project esky using the structured from light homography in order to determine the pixel location of the display in order to create a polynomial to fit into an undistortion the result well you want to see something cool what would happen if i was using this right now to present this talk you can already see through the headset, well, I've got some equipment around me. For example, this lovely little engine. Move it around. Flip it through. Take a look on the inside. You can see all the little pistons. Only some of the small things that we can achieve using Project Esky. Now, really, the attended application Basically, well, I want to put this in the field. One of the examples is we're engaging with agriculture tech companies in order to allow us to help better train people in identifying fruit, for example, when picking in the field. So one application we intend is to basically guide the picker in identifying the quality of the fruit, maybe even turn it into a game where they can get bonus points in a bonus hour for picking correct fruit at an appropriate rate. So to summarize, well, Project Aerial, an open source 3D printed AR headset for industrial AR. There's several limitations, even if it looks amazing. It's cheap LCD panels lead to high latency and a low refresh rate. There's also some issues with the optical arrangement causing optical bleed between the two eyes. And the head tracking can always be improved in order to get higher fidelity. The intent, basically deployed in the field. So with any further ado, thank you very much. And welcome to Beer Labs. Thank you. Are there any questions already? If not, I have one. Sure. Maybe I can just start start with one. Oh, there's there's a raised hand. So maybe Matthias, you can go first. Uh, uh, you said that we were gonna see the interface, but you really showed it briefly. I'm really curious to see if we can have a better view of it. Uh, so give me a quick second. I heard also for some it was pixelated. I could see it at the beginning well, but later it went also a little bit pixelated. Uh, that's a shame. Okay. Thank you very much. Sponsored by Zoom. Um, let me see if yeah. I can make that a little bit clearer for everyone. Just give me a quick hoy if it's clear enough for you. I guess we can see most of the, I mean, what the objects are. It's, I mean, mm. yeah, it's really pixelated. So I mean, it's ah, really that's cool. a shame. Well, basically, I've got a desktop environment that I run around with. So I actually wear this backpack PC to work every day because most of the work I do is supervisory and also design drawing on a piece of paper. It's nice having that virtual monitor in front of me. Makes for a pretty good stream deck, too, apparently. Can I follow up with another question? Or... Yeah, sure. Go for it. Yeah. Did, did you also design the entire interface for so, interacting with it, or is it just something you pick up somewhere else? No, nope. so this is, this is Project Esky. So Project Esky is also Beer Labs' brainchild. It basically handles all the extremely hard-to-do rendering, including temporal reprojection to create accurate placed content, as well as extending the MRTK to be used with open source headsets to allow for this very nice and rapid development of UI UX. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have another question. Sure. Um, so you said that the that the aim of, of the devices is to to use them in industry, right? Yeah. And we just heard in the keynote that uh, even if you wear uh, glasses like like uh, like almost real glasses like uh, AR devices. Uh, people still have a problem with it wearing them 
um, even if you only see a little glint in the display. So what do you think, that, would you have a, a similar problem or, or how can you convince users to, to wear your device? So I've actually taken this backpack and headset set up and thrown it at a couple of tradies. And they said that while it's true, that it's a bit of extra weight on their head. And it's much nicer to be able to quickly, for example, flip up the headset when you don't need the content and flip it back down when you do. So it makes it much easier to quickly doff and don it uh, in the middle of a field activity. So if you need the augmentations, it's there. Um, they felt that this was extremely important, especially for those that were intending to do welding. We've had someone come to us and say, can we adapt this to our welding helmet arrangement so we can overlay visuals? That's interesting because you would think that with such a bulky headset, they'd be very against it. But I guess it's one of those things where if the tool's good enough, they're happy to put up with the nonsense. Also for welding, they maybe are already accustomed to, to wearing such devices now. Don't you already is, have like helmet like stuff too? Right, right. I mean, they're already used to wearing heavy headgear all day, every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, are there any more questions? If not, thank you for your talk. No worries. <laughs> well, we can continue with the second talk. Yay. Second talk. Yes. Are we going to have a demo session later? 